The Good broadcaster's morning. live, Claire. Good morning, we're live. Morning, Rob. Good morning. Good morning, How everybody. How are you? I'm really well. I'm really well, yeah. Thanks. Excited to be on here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> so, um, Rob, you are the founder of Soul Junkie. Yeah. Uh, and would you like to talk a bit about the Soul Junkie community and mm -hmm. about your journey to founding Soul Junkie and, you know, where you are at in your life? Yeah. Uh, to... Don't give me more than that because I'll only forget. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's two hours gone already. <laughs> so maybe you want to make massive changes in your life so yeah well i mean firstly i'm glad you mentioned community because i do feel like it's an important part of soul junkie is providing a community where like-minded people can get together and just be part of that soul junkie began well, I mean, it began as a vision very much in um, Peru, but mm -hmm. in actual fact, when I came back and started to implement that vision, mm -hmm. it was solely based around the clothing brand Soul Junkie yeah. um, and building the community. Yeah. Um, but I kind of got pulled off of line with that. And now I've introduced the healing aspect to, yeah. you know, deliver my shamanic practice to people. And it's pulled me much more in line with the whole thing. Yeah. And now I can see it blossoming, you know, and yeah. um, and so it's a space we were going to be going to be um, putting on events in the future, and Brilliant. there'll be mentoring or courses in 2021 um, for people as well. Um, so people, especially for people, I think, um, that have been through a similar path to myself with anxiety, depression, um, and just to hit all the topics in the title suicidal thoughts and everything like that you know because i think it's really really important um rather than choosing somebody to mentor you um that just appeals who has what you want etc you know and and, and is yeah. loud and out there and successful on facebook and all the other social media platforms and stuff yeah it's easy to kind of get pulled into and this is part of my journey again it's easy yeah. to get pulled into these things yeah but to really make sure that you uh, have a deep resonance and that person has specific um, similarities in their journey to yours, I think, yeah. because they, they'd be able, because I think the courses that I run are going to have the healing involved as yeah. well as the launching of business and, and making sure that you're in alignment with it and everything like that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yes, anyway, that's just a glimpse of the future where it all started for me. Um, I was very much in the thick of, depression if you go back three years my life changed like you couldn't believe I had everything I was a successful photographer I'd been photographing weddings in the Cotswolds mm -hmm. uh, for a number of years and I moved up to Cheshire where my life changed and I separated from my ex-wife bless her and um, yeah but it, was, it wasn't until about four or six months after that that I really took a dip now mm -hmm. in hindsight absolutely I've been suffering depression for years and in actual fact when I first moved from the Cotswolds to Cheshire I became agoraphobic um, it was just a huge mission to even go and post somebody's memory stick from a wedding I'd photographed God wow. only knows how I really photographed weddings yeah. um, to the post office you know I'd turn up to the post office with no address on the parcel and stuff like yeah. that and just just yeah in and out the shop quick as possible it was just horrible it was really horrible but I see the gift in it all now and yeah. I know that it's something that I had to go through. Um, so four to six months afterwards, I took a real, real nosedive. I was out there. It was in conjunction with my spiritual awakening as well. So mm -hmm. we all know how lovely that can be. Um, sometimes, you know, that alone pushes us, um, yeah, all over the place, doesn't it? Pulls yeah. us all over the place. Yeah. Um, but I... Yeah, it's not... Um... Getting more in touch with ourselves and our higher selves is not a fluffy experience. It's not. Well, you realise when you come to realise that, well, you're pulling off all the masks that you've worn mm. throughout your life mm. by means of survival. That's what it was very much for me. 
Yeah. Um, and I'd also stopped drinking, which had been uh, a tool of survival again, you know, just to mask everything, to numb everything, really, mm -hmm. for many, many years. And in actual fact, it was around that time that I really did sink even further um, because I always thought, you know, not drinking will give me an extra layer of clarity, which indeed it does, but it also gives you an extra layer of clarity to look at your problems and, and your insecurities. And, you know, so yeah. it's kind of because it's a coping mechanism yeah. as much as anything, you know. Yeah. Um, so. Absolutely. I, yeah. In doing that, and I had a, a real brief encounter with uh, a woman as well. And that was a gift in itself as well. Uh, but that, you know, the confrontation there, I just wasn't used to experiencing in my life. And um, bearing in mind I was suffering anxiety, I was actually becoming frozen. I, mm -hmm. I couldn't even talk. Um, and that happened on more than one occasion. But I then became like that out in society as well, where perhaps I might be around the supermarket and just having to chat to people. I couldn't look anybody in the eye. Um, and I was coming home, living under the roof of, my mother uh, as well at the time, just during that transitional phase of my life. Um, and yeah, unbeknown to her, I was basically contemplating topping myself every single day um, in my room. And I just couldn't get out of that thought process despite yeah. trying and being part of this course and that course. But yeah. you know, people, the self-help books, help books I was trying to read and I just had, you know, I couldn't even really read, to be honest. Yeah. I couldn't even focus on a book. Yeah. Um, so it all led though this course, the particular course that I was on, which I won't mention. Um, that in itself, I, it it gave me an opportunity. It wasn't the right sort of course for me, and in hindsight, yeah. it doesn't resonate at all. Uh, the people yeah. on it, the people that run it, etc., as well. But um, it was me that was uh, unable to address my own fears. I couldn't face mm -hmm. my own fears on it. And so that's why it pushed me further down or yeah. was part was part of what pushed me further down, you know, yeah. but I absolutely don't regret it. I see that as a gift now as well. Yeah. And it was all necessary to push me further down to the point of, you know, near the end of my life, basically, for for me to find the path that truly resonated with me, um, which was uh, I was helped onto that path by a girl called Zana Merix, who's a phenomenal sort of psychotherapist, stroke shaman um, herself. Um, but it, it was the path of ayahuasca and going out to Peru to sit with the medicine, um, which was the initial huge, huge shift for me and where I found myself. Mm -hmm. um, and it was huge. I don't know why I booked in for four weeks. And it was because it was just like a last ditch effort. It, uh, for yeah. me you know it was kind of like all in four weeks let's yeah. let's do this you know yeah um and I thought I'd be all right with it you know I thought because I'd had an experience with drugs in my youth and mm -hmm. in and after my uh, military days as well mm -hmm. um for a number of years I thought okay this will this will be all right this is the way for me to deal with it <laughs> Oh my God. The first experience was just something else. I haven't spoken about this for a while, actually. Um, but yeah, needless to say, I was not all right at all because I was full of fear and anxiety. That's exactly um, what it targeted. But it was also mm -hmm. my inability to let go and, and my need to try and control my circumstances as well which kicked in, which made the whole experience even worse for me. Um, Trying to control um, the experience. Well, yeah, because um, the lights go out in the Maloka, which is like a circular wooden structure that you, you drink in. You've just been up, you've drank with the shaman, you go back to your place. There was hardly any moon that night. The, land, the candles are, are blown out. The, there's no lights on in, you know, for a, half a mile <laughs> radius or whatever, but yeah. it's, you can barely see your hand in front of your face. And so yeah. the shaman begins to sing 
is Icarus. And, um, and all of a sudden, just out of the blackness of my vision, this zip undoes and this demon comes out of this zip. <laughs> at, at which point I just shake my head. I'm already trying to control it. I'm trying to shake it off, which is just laughable um, in hindsight. But um, it wasn't too long before I still can't believe the level of a noise that I was hearing as well. Okay. Um, just my whole vision, just a wall of psychedelic craziness, all fragments, all these levels coming up and just erupting in my face. Um, but every fragment, just an obscenity uh, or a demon laughing at me, jeering at me, pointing at me. Um, and I'd remembered my flashlight was the, the kind of the get out. You know, not the get out, but it was like, uh, I just remember something about flashing my flashlight. Yeah. This is just actually before the vision that I've just described. And um, they were trying, they would come over and try and help you, you know, or they would come and see you if you flashed your flashlight. But I got really paranoid as Jim was coming over to me and uh, denied all knowledge of any flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> and it was two minutes after that that these really strong visions started to happen. They came over 10 minutes later because I was just hyperventilating against the wall. Wow. seeing all these crazy visions but um because i'd lost touch of all reality lost touch of sense of all reality i thought that uh, i re the only thing i could remember was that i had been in a bad place and i had opted for this but i didn't remember i was in peru i didn't remember i was at a wow. retreat i didn't remember i drank ayahuasca i thought i'd signed up to an eternity of what i was currently seeing oh, wow. as an alternate as an alternative reality and um and so it was pretty, pretty full on. Wow. Um, but so, so this four week uh, retreat. Yeah, that was, that was the first night. That was the first <laughs> night of the retreat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. So you're still jet lagged? Um, no, I'd been in Iquitos, Iquitos for a number of days before okay. the retreat. So you'd had time to adjust to the climate and the different... Well, kind of. I very much stayed in the hotel. I went out once to go to the bank um, okay. because I, you know, I'd had a bit of a journey over there where every, all my anxieties and fears had kicked in again because um, I yeah. felt relatively okay before I left. But the journey over there and there was confusion about my baggage and I didn't know where to go in one of the airports and nobody spoke. Obviously, everybody speaks Spanish and I didn't. Yes. And uh, that just rocked me. And so yes. I found myself not even wanting to go out of the hotel. But um, so, but I I wasn't jet lagged. I can't say I was jet lagged. Okay. Mm. But but you are in this um, ceremonial setting. Yeah. You're actually being held and looked after by trained. Oh, one hundred percent. Trainers yeah. who are there to look after you. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I would not recommend doing this stuff unless you're in that circumstance because there's, you know, you'd have to do your research on such things as well um, because you can, it's like anything, you can go to the wrong place, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would recommend the hummingbird in Iquitos as, as being a safe place to go for the sure. Hummingbird. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was your first night. That was my first night, yeah. And um, Hefty. Oh, that rocked me, man. I, as soon as I started to get a grip of reality again, I'm like, I'm going home. <laughs> you know? yeah. But, um, but the, I mean, that was the whole I would have been like, I actually, I'll go to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> it soon became apparent there, you know, that um, the reason for me having booked four weeks, because it gave me the luxury of time. Most yeah. people go for nine or 12 days. But um, yeah. um, because I'd had a good... Uh, chat with jim who runs the retreat before i went and i said i was thinking of planning i wanted to do four weeks told him a bit about myself he agreed and so you go in there for a longer period of time because of that longer period of time i was able to step back on my doors um and my whole lesson for the four weeks like in a nutshell was um basically open your heart that's what i had to do um and in opening my heart love conquers fear 
that was the biggest lesson, you know. Um, and so, yeah, that was the, the lesson in it all. And I had the luxury, like I said, I had the luxury of time to be able to step back on my doors. And every time that fear started to creep in, just practice opening my heart and noticing that disappear. And in practicing that over the next few evenings or sessions with ayahuasca, everything else beautiful started to come in. Everything that everybody had been trying to tell me for two or three years, just integrating like that you know um one after another so i got like 20 major shifts throughout the whole experience but that was the main the main thing was um yeah so because um, i don't have any experience of these um plant medicines at all myself and I, mm. I and i do understand that it's hard to describe in words something which is something which is outside of other people's experience I think particularly with plant medicine, actually, um, you could try and explain it or describe it as, you know, uh, but as much as you might try, it's just like, no, nah, it's quite indescribable. It's just indescribable, really. Yeah, beyond um, but, but also it can be very, very different experience for everybody, you know, yeah. um, even from session to session as well, you know. So it really just depends what's ready to be shifted. Um, so... Yeah. Um, but also more, some people more visual than others. and um, yeah. so, so can you describe, so you obviously took part in further ceremonies yeah. while you were there. Mm. So can you describe your experience of how the ceremony begins and of the sights and sounds and, and in a sensory way, what, it, what it's like to be in that circle? Um yeah definitely it's like i can see it in front of me right now everybody uh you're in the jungle um there's a bit of a clearing just where the maloka sits actually um there are toilets you'll do well to remember that that are just outside <laughs> the maloka um <laughs> uh, jim did say something incredibly funny actually um whilst describing the effects of ayahuasca and that was never trust an ayahuasca fart <laughs> <laughs> cleansing <laughs> the purge yeah purging so um everybody gets apprehensive um i mean i've taken it over 20 times now and I still would get apprehensive because you never know what you're going to get yes. um, before ceremony but you know if you're in a position that you're kind of you've done it a few times and you know that you do have the ability no matter what you face to open up and let go um, then you'll be all right you know yeah and because um, you're in a safe setting with facilitators who are qualified to hold that energy yes and they'll keep you safe about you know with energies that don't belong in that circle as well they'll protect you from those um but um you know there's very little they can do in terms of affecting your journey and what you're seeing and what you're going through mm. um but they can make sure you're safe and they know that you are all right actually you know yeah. it's just yeah. you're going through a difficult time right now yeah. because of what you're seeing you know yeah. so um yeah so so you, yes there's apprehension walking in there just up a couple of steps in the maloka door i was really anal about my position was always 12 o'clock to the <laughs> to the shaman but, um so i I go in there it was a whole like i was like a german on a beach on holiday you know <laughs> i was like i'm going there i put my water bottle there at like one o'clock in the afternoon Ceri ceremonies at seven in the evening so it's <laughs> I just got it. I could not be out of that position, you know. Um, but yes, and once you walk in, everybody settles down. Jim goes around. He's cleansing the space um, with Sage. Mm -hmm. And he walks around doing that. Everybody's in there sitting down by seven o'clock. And the last person to walk in would be the shaman. Um, once he sits and everybody calms down um, and just settles, just waits actually one by one you're invited up to go and drink um you so you set your intention and you, and you drink the medicine and just go back and the next one goes up and um and then you sit for perhaps sort of 10 minutes or so um the candles are blown out and uh when manny 
the amazing little shaman um, that we have over there, um, yeah, feels it's ready. He'll start with his whistle and his flute and his singing, his echo. So, yeah, it's... Um, so you're sat in a circle in a hut in the mm -hmm. dark and there's traditional music going on, shamanic music, in fact. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Icaros, they sing to the medicine, basically, um, and bring the medicine in, the spirit in. Um, after perhaps 20 minutes, um, you begin to hear people purging. Um, it must be <laughs> thinking about people, explaining this to people now. Just, I mean, if you were like completely sober stone cold sober as an experience it, witnessing it looking in it must look pretty mental really you know because people are in their you know purging into their buckets and dashing out to the toilet and you know if somebody's had a big dose it can be rolling around anything can kick off really but um and i think that's the importance of going somewhere uh, responsible as well because yes. they can manage all of that, you know. And, yes, no, safe no space. bravado or ego when it comes yes. to your dose and stuff like that. Yes. Because at the end of the day, if you drink too much and um, have a really horrendous night, it will affect other people's journeys, you know. And that's yes. the beauty of somewhere like the hum hummingbird is they'll rarely have over 12 people at a time, whereas you can yes. go to some places and there's 50, 60. Yeah. people you know and just must be crazy in there the amount yeah. of different energies in there but the noise the distractions uh, yeah and it doesn't matter how many shaman they've got to deal with it it's just no definitely yeah, yeah. so you can have a wildly different experience depending on where you go mm. for sure um but yes it's not all bad it's beautiful as well you know, the visions that you get are just, you know, even if you've had a particularly hard night, you can sit there and wonder when you're just coming off your peak, exactly, you know, and just seeing beautiful things as well once you've calmed down. And, so does this um, last all night, this experience? It lasts about four hours. The ceremony will be about four, okay. four and a half hours. Okay. Um, the active ingredient, DMT, which comes from the Shikruna plant, um, when ingested, um lasts a lot longer than if it's smoked it's a very sharp short hit okay. um but that's what the ayahuasca vine does um because normally if you ingested shakuna it wouldn't affect you at all because right. we have something in our systems that prevents it being uh, absorbed into the bloodstream or something like that yeah but it's the, yeah. But it's the ayahuasca that um allows the dmt to be ingested basically Okay. Yeah. Kind so of activates it. Yeah. Um, allows it to activate. Yeah. Through the stomach. Um, okay. And so it's a much longer experience uh, okay. when ingested. So. And so, then, yeah. so for the rest of the retreat, so how mm. many? So in a four-week retreat, how many ceremonies did you attend? Um, Twelve ayahuasca and uh, three San Pedro. Okay. So, and yeah. what's San Pedro? San Pedro is a cactus from the mountains. Um, is that what Carlos Castaneda used to talk about in his books? I have no idea who that is, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I shall introduce you to Carlos Castaneda. I used to read his books when I was a teenager. Anyway, mm. yeah. So, yes, yeah, very, very different vibe. It's taken more often than not during the day rather than at night um the active um thing in there is mescaline um, yeah i think that is what his writings mm. were about yeah. yeah i shall have to revisit those books now that i'm a pretty yeah. first adult and that's much more like uh if there's a comparison to be made i'd say that's much more like mushrooms it's kind of like a gentle it's <clears throat> yeah depending on how much you take yes but generally yes it is gentle um so hmm. so say so you were there for 30 days and you did 12 ceremonies so that's like almost every other day yeah. so what does the retreat involve for the time that you're not in the ceremony is it about integrating those experiences 
100 percent would be wise to keep a diary and to journal and to recover physically as much as you can before the next ceremony oh um, really yeah so i mean particularly after the ceremony. the whole thing is all about the ceremony um well no again i guess that depends very much on where you go because there'll be different retreats that use different tools and different conversations to be had to help you integrate um and to you know we had after uh so first thing in the morning um or just after breakfast rather uh on the day after a ceremony we would all sit around in a circle and discuss our experiences and anybody would have the opportunity of oh, the shaman would be there as well jim would be there to translate and um, just to give you some feedback and if anybody had any further questions or anything like that as well but there's a lot of power in those circles just sharing your experiences for yeah. the first time with those people that are, you know can understand and can yeah. get it and are doing the same thing you know um, yeah. but there's conversations that Jim holds outside of that um, as well um, giving people uh, tips and uh, discussing things like depression anxiety and mm. um, giving you a number of really good important books to read as well actually one of which he recommended i must mention this um, for anybody who does suffer from anxiety um, and depression <sighs> if i can remember the title um, that he recommends before you go out there and it's letting go of the pathway to surrender Okay. By, by a guy called um, David R. Hawkins, I believe. Um, and it's just such a, an amazing transformational book. It's the only book I've ever read, really, that helped um, and gives you a worthy tool of combating the depths of, you know, being really in the thick of it. Brilliant. Um, so we'll yeah. put a to that in the comments afterwards. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Brilliant. But I'd recommend that book. It's on audio as well, if you can bear downloading the audio app the audible yeah. app rather yeah i like so, so so um so you went from someone who had is it fair to say had a life crisis huge yeah and and was seriously wondering how you were going to get through every day mm. to to someone who started this community, you have your own yeah. ethical brand, hmm. you offer healing, sound healing, Reiki. I mean, that's quite extraordinary, isn't it? Well, thank you, Claire. I guess it is, yeah. <laughs> but it, um, it's interesting because we never step back and look at ourselves hmm. in that way. Hmm. Well, not during ceremony four five six i um i i had long been losing my love for wedding photography i knew that wasn't my future but i didn't have a clue what was yeah um during ceremony four five round about that sort of time i it just dropped into me i was just so aware of how much i wanted to help people and and on reflection of noticing that how that's always been the case and that despite the masks and the you know, the Jack the Lad sort of bullshit mask that I always used to wear um, in order Which to survive and to be popular and, and everything like that. Um, yeah. Um, not having known you then, I can't no, imagine yeah. you being like that. Yeah, but. well, I mean, I, yeah, I clearly kind of, yeah. But despite being that person, I always had a huge soft spot for people that were struggling to fit in. And I think it's because their situation resonated with me and I'm, I kind of on some subconscious sort of level um, just clicked with them and, you know, perhaps knew my own guys was part of bollocks, I guess. I don't know. But I always held out a hand for people that were struggling, you know, at work, working for Cheltenham Borough Council and stuff like that. There was a, I just, yeah, I would never be part of the pack that yeah. attacked, you know? Yeah. Um, I'd always give them time. And I always found that those people that struggled to fit in were always, without fail, the best people to know, you know? They are. Yeah. One of, there's just no doubt about it. And so all of these things are dropping in for me. But I just I felt 
like I wanted to help people, but not only that, I knew I could help people. I didn't know what that looked like, but I knew I could. I knew I had something, you know. Um, and so that is the very beginning of realising my, you know, uh, my future or what to aim for. And I did ask, did ask for guidance during that ceremony. And I'm like, well, you know, how does that work? What are my real gifts here? And I just loud and clear got back, Rob, you have many gifts, go and have fun exploring them, you know? Wow. So wow. it's basically don't pigeonhole yourself, go and explore, have fun. And so when I came back, I I was addicted to the fluting ceremony that I heard. So I got myself yeah. my first native flute. I started yeah. practicing with that. Um, and also Reiki was the first thing that I started to mm. learn. Um, I went back to Zana, actually, near London, and um, got my Reiki 1 and 2 and started to offer that to people briefly. Um, but also I'd been guided that... Um, clothing would be part of my future as well mm. and to sell branded clothing with messages on yes. um, and stuff as well so um, that's kind of where I set off uh, and I was just doing all these things I was just trying to embrace this new me you know yeah um, and it wasn't always easy integration can be tough and it was a bumpy road yeah. um, but also on that road, I, I signed up to um, become a sh shamanic practitioner. So it's like mm -hmm. a 12-month course that I'm still currently on, yeah. um, which I have to say has been as transformative as that month. And, you know, because I went back this year as well, um, this February just gone, um, which would have been a year to the day. Wow. Um, and but I did a short I didn't do a month this time actually I got halfway through a nine day retreat and thought how the hell did I do this for a month you know <laughs> but I think just given what you need to deal with it yeah to get through what you actually need to experience you know yeah um so so yeah it's um I can't remember where I was going with that but um, yeah, so oh, yeah the, the, February. the course that I'm you know and and learning shamanism for myself and embracing and getting to know and develop the relationship with my own guides in order to help other people yeah. has been a two-way street and it's absolutely put me in you know I get clear guidance when I drop in for myself now and go with the assistance of my power animals my shamanic guide my spirit guide and everything like that and I just feel like I get shifts for myself now as and when I need them um, through these guides that are you could only put on a par, at least with medicine, you know, uh, in my experience. So it's been a hugely transformative um, part of my life um, and is what's given me the strength to kind of kick things up a gear and yeah. and move on to the next phase of, of Soul yeah. Junkie and, and really starting to stand in my true power, you know, yeah, um, which is kind of amazing because <laughs> previously yeah. I just, yeah, and, that, yeah. and that's where we all want to be in our lives, isn't it? Standing in our true, true power mm. and, and living a life that reflects our values. Yeah, and having the confidence and um, to be able to offer what we can help people with, yes. you know? Yes. Um, because for years and years and years, even during my photography days, I could have been way bigger. I mean, I was successful anyway, but I could have yeah. been way more successful. Yes. Um, but I didn't have the self-belief or the confidence yeah. to, to execute the business side of things. Yeah. Um, you know, because I just wanted to hide all the time and be safe and, you know. Yes. So, um, yeah, and it's the same. It's and the it, same it, with anything it's such life. a massive thing for everyone being seen. Mm. And, mm. Um, and for sure, when you put yourself out there, then... You, you do open yourself up to criticism. And, and yeah, it's that's just to, another lesson, isn't it? The lesson yeah, of just not giving a shit. a shit what people think, you know? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is have not giving a shit what people think because you know mm. that however you come across, your intention is good. Yeah. You're doing your best. If it's that offensive, you'll work on it and improve it. And that um, people love to be offended anyway. Yeah, yeah. 
um, most of us are addicted to our problems mm. and uh, and in fact that when we live according to our values then we're living in harmony with ourselves mm. and when we live in conflict with our values we, we create deep conflict in ourselves which then comes out in our lives in various ways towards the people around us. Hmm. You're right. You said something in the middle there about uh, most of us are addicted to Our like being, being in victim mode, basically. Yeah. It's kind of like how I felt it. But I think there's, there's a right way and a wrong way to coax people out of that, you know. And, and yes, you have to be firm at some points, but I see so many people out there actually being too forceful with that point when people are in victim mode you know they're not in a position to be able to absorb the fact that they're in victim mode if, if that's how you're just going to tell them you yeah know? there's ways in there and i think yeah. using yeah there's there's definitely yeah. ways in there and i think that 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 comes in remembering how you used to be and having sympathy for the situation yeah. and, and getting through to them gently and you know to be able to see that without offending them you know and so it's yeah. kind of like a little intricate path to walk with people really. yeah compassion um yeah. yeah 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 and it and it is really easy to become intolerant mm -hmm. when <laughs> go on we get, when we get into that, <laughs> it's that drama triangle isn't it yeah yeah mm. victim yeah and mm. yeah we become the victim, the aggressor, the, yeah. Yeah. But one lesson at a time and... Um... Yes. <laughs> and we're never perfect. We're always a work in progress. Can you imagine how boring it would be to be perfect? Yeah, just no. I mean, what are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, we're going to do all day. Oh, wow, look, I'm perfect. I'm still not happy. <laughs> <laughs> so your clothing brand so so you use fairly traded organic cotton i yes organic cottons um i think not just on the eco front with it but um particularly uh ethical clothing as well yes um and only dealing with um lines of clothing that treat people fairly yes um uh, as well as it being organic and, you know, in the future, hoping to embrace hemp when it becomes more available for people yeah. like me, um, you know. So, um, yeah, um, you can see it all on souljunkie.co.uk yeah. uh, along with my healing page and stuff like that, which is on the website now. Um, yeah. But it's it ticks that creative box for me, you know. I love being creative. Uh, all the designs come from my own experiences or something that I want to say. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, that's why this one's so simple. My green T-shirt. Yeah. Um, just because it's organic and all that lovely stuff. Yeah. So. Um, and I think what most people don't realise is that cotton is one of the most toxic crops because crops are pesticide use is regulated. Mm. On food crops because we ingest yep. them but cotton is one of the most toxic most heavily pesticide laden crops and for the people who pick the cotton mm. this is really devastating to their long-term health yeah so for us to use to, to use organic cotton and to use fairly traded cotton mm. we're making a massive difference to other people's lives yeah. And huge. And I, I, huge. Yeah. And it's, it's not, the, still not that widely uh, known, actually. Well, the textile industry is quite shocking, hmm. to be honest. It's got a lot to answer for. Yeah. Um, and yet we're all so. I'm not criticising people. I'm not saying you should go and run out and bin all your clothes and be more ethical, you know, yeah. but because that would just be a disaster in itself. Yeah. Um, but just to become a little bit more conscious 
yeah. about the clothing that you do buy in future yeah. is, is a really good step yeah. to take. Maybe to buy one really nice vest rather mm. than five cheap vests. The reality of buying a top for five, ten quid is you, sadly your the probability of supporting um unfair labor at yeah. best you know yeah, child I mean, slave labor at worst yes absolutely yeah. yeah um slavery child slavery is a real thing yeah and um you know um the real i mean how to come how to company how does anybody produce something for five quid in another country and get it there for you to purchase it for five quid. Yeah. That's just utterly ridiculous. Yeah. Ship it here, sell it to a retailer, the retailer does And have a profit in there for everybody. Yeah. You know, for 10 quid even, you know, it's just, no. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and yeah, even the, the country that, uh, the company that we use, the factory that we use over here as well, um, they use... Uh, vegan inks and nice. yeah and oh, try and cut, the cut down on their the use of water and everything like that with the machines that they use and stuff as well so brilliant um but yes you're right i mean it does it comes it comes at a cost you know ethical yeah. um quality clothing is is not cheap in comparison to the to the alternatives that we just mentioned it's, yeah it's not really it's expensive about, either about fashion hmm. yeah but Quality is so different. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And, and but also, you know, I don't use any polyester. If there's any polyester in um, a sole junky hoodie, it's been upcycled polyester. Okay. It's been salvaged. So, um, yeah. But I mean, we keep try and keep polyester or any oil products out of out of it anyway. Yeah. But you know, there might be fifteen percent in a hoodie, but definitely one hundred percent has been salvaged. And that was all. You know, that was a decision of ours anyway. But. Um, the charity that we support from every sale, I donate a percentage of every healing that I give to people and every sale from a t-shirt or a hoodie that I make um, to an amazing um, charity called Survival International who supports. Oh, they're incredible. Yeah, they are just amazing. And yeah. yeah, I light up and I can feel goosebumps when I just mention their name for what yeah. they um, are helping to achieve in the world and have done for the last 50 years now um in just supporting indigenous uh, people supporting indigenous people fighting for their rights fighting for their land ownership yes. um and against corrupt governments often um yeah, and also right. helping if you look at the situation over in brazil um where they're just burning down the forest and ten you know all these sorts of travesties that you see on the news yes. and stuff yeah um so um survival international are one of the key players in in trying to um, resolve all of that, you know, and to uh, keep sacred uh, what remains sacred in this world, you know. Yeah. So, um, and the land that that these people exist on, these people live we on, have, we have belong so to. to learn, don't we, from these people? Oh, yes, yes, we do. I trip places oh. with one of them tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And I think really the last couple of months has really illustrated. <clears throat> How far, how far from ourselves we've gone. And how detached from nature. And um, nature, it's something yeah. I've done over the last few months is, I haven't really hammered my business out in the last couple of months, actually. I've used this time to, it's been such a transformative time for me, I've used this time to go in. Mm. And there's been enough noise <laughs> of whatever flavour you choose to absorb online without me adding to it anyway. So it's been the mm. perfect opportunity for me to come back to myself, to deep dive, to go out into nature, Mm -hmm. And just to let it evolve and unfold. And I've just made such leaps and bounds within myself over the last couple of months. It's been huge. Yeah. And um, very much for looking forward to I'm moving in 11, uh, on the 11th of June. Are you? Um, yeah. So I'm finally uh, leaving County Durham again. And um, yeah, heading down to, a, well, I see a lovely little town. I've seen it once in the dark, Retford, and I haven't sat, I haven't been in the flat that I've um, organised. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I know, yeah, it looked nice. <laughs> on the it's pictures, like on the the pictures, pictures. looked good. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be great. 
It will, it will. It, yeah, it won't be as big as it appears on that, you know, 10 mil lens or whatever they've used to photograph yeah, the rooms with. But... <laughs> I flat looked amazing in the estate agent's photographs. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to buy furniture for it, you know, as well. And um, I'm going all second hand with that um, at the moment. And I kind of, I asked for measurements of the flat and what I gave back was the, what came back was the, the tenant's attempt to pierce the room out so she, she, she says robert is the living room is 23 by 17 feet and i'm like because the tenant pierced it out and i'm like what does that even mean was she heel yeah. to toe heel to toe what yeah, size what size, like, what she size feet has she got she or was, was she always piercing was there a gap that existed between <clears throat> these pierces or what so i still no idea what you know what size room i'm in for that's but. hilarious <laughs> But yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm calling it the Soul Junkie Live Lounge, you know, instead of being propped up against my radiator, uh, trying to, you know, combat the light coming in from the back. It's just yeah. going to have every, everything's going to be beautifully set up for me. And I'm just, nice. sort of, you know, I'm going to be able to start producing um, music as well and meditations for people. And that's all just stuff that I want to do. It's just freebies that I can offer online and stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's exploring my own sort of shamanic sound, yeah. Um, uh, you know, which is part of my healing sometimes as well. Yeah. Um, so it's just going to be really nice to have a dedicated space, you know. Yes. So oh, yeah. Lovely. And then, if people are interested in your hoodies and vests and tees, yeah. they can look on your website. Click onto the website. Yeah, all the w dots and um, souljunkie.co co.uk souljunkie.co.uk um yeah if you sign up um uh, there you get 11 percent off of your first order as well Brilliant. so um yeah make sure you you sign up for that Brilliant. and yeah always approachable for any questions on sizes we've tried to give as much information as we can online though um but yeah and my healing page is on there as well Brilliant. um so and you so <clears throat> you do distance healing yes yeah yeah most so of, especially now yeah so at this time when people can't actually come to you they can book for distance healing book online it's worked really well claire to be honest i've always found it to be every bit as powerful as in person anyway and yes yeah. i don't perhaps deliver as much sound through my singing balls i'll give you a bit now look I don't know whether you'll pick this up, actually. Can you hear that? No? Okay. Not fair really. <laughs> That's why I don't do it online. <laughs> um, when Belle was on in her crystal room, yeah. well, before we went live, mm. <coughs> she tried her crystal bowls mm. and it didn't come across at all. And I think you have to have... I've got a dedicated microphone, yeah, but I didn't plug that in for the purposes of yeah. on too tight on space like and stuff. So fluffy thing oh. on. <laughs> but yeah, so um if anybody would like a healing, just to run you through that, what that looks like is I would have a voice chat like this, uh, uh, a yeah. video chat like this. Yeah. Um and it's just an opportunity to interact with you and to, to connect with you properly. Um um uh, for 15, 20 minutes or so, or half an hour or whatever it turns out to be. And that just helps us um, get to the bottom of a few things and set an intention for the healing ahead yeah. and then break off of line and voice call you back um, and vocalise and narrate through the duration of the healing itself. Brilliant. Um, just to talk people through everything that I'm seeing with my guides and, and everything, whether that's, um, you know, chakra replacement or upgrading or, you know, soul retrievals, past life clearances, DNA, all this sort of things, you know. So um, just depending on where we're guided and, and what needs, what you need help with, really. So yeah, um, a lot of people are experiencing anxiety at the moment, I think. I've spoken yeah. to a lot of people who are experiencing anxiety at the moment because there was anxiety going into lockdown because everything was different. And then, of course, for a lot of people, the loss of income, for a lot of people, the stress of work, for a lot yeah. of people, the loss of their usual, our usual mm. activities, company, distractions, social activities. 
And now it's like we've all become accustomed to this and it feels yeah. safe in a way. And, and I've spoken to a lot of people this week who are really experiencing anxiety about another change, which isn't a change to what we were familiar with before. It's another change into another unfamiliar set of rules which nobody's really clear about and everybody's very keen to do the right thing. Mm. And I think a lot of people could really do with some help with anxiety at the moment. I think there's lots of things that people can do to to help. And obviously I'm going to take a, a spiritual approach to that. Mm. Um, but you don't need to be spiritual to meditate. You don't need to be spiritual to do some breath work. Um, you know, you don't just anything that opens your heart, getting out into nature mm. um, and just sitting in nature and appreciating that for a short amount of time we've had such a beautiful spring even in the northeast <laughs> um to make good use of that and and just anything that's heart opening um is is yeah just to reduce those anxiety levels but of course you know if people wanted help or wanted to even speak into that a little bit more with me then I'm more than more than welcome to yeah so it is a hard time for lots of people. It just doesn't matter what your beliefs are. And that's so something yes. else that I've experienced um, surrounding what is actually at play here. What is going on? What the fuck is going on? You know, um, and your beliefs, whether it's you lap up everything the mainstream throws at you or whether you're diving down rabbit holes um, left, right and centre uh, with the alternatives as well, which is much more my cup of tea, I have to say. But you also but you, you form your own beliefs from that. But I think essentially is let's not have confrontation about how everybody did believing in different things. You know, um, yeah. let's stay united. Everyone's trying to understand. All that's yeah. going on is mm. that everyone's trying to understand within their own construct that they've created in their life from their own experiences. So just be understanding of each other, trying to go yeah. through that process for themselves, you know, rather than yeah. attacking each other, you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I find it so easy to get into that space of, yeah. of petty confrontation mm. and very... Um, unsatisfying that space mm. is yeah and, and the thing that you were saying about um whether or not you're spiritual it's like that thing about that we're all spiritual beings having a human experience mm. and all of our human experience is different but because you don't believe in something doesn't mean it won't work for you true i think all you have to do to get something from any form of healing is to be open to that healing yeah yeah so um yeah and to want change to want to mm -hmm. shift yeah to yeah. try something new yeah. um yeah cool well i hope people look at your website yeah, me too. If anybody has any questions, just... Oh, we're not live, are we? We are live, yeah. Oh, we are live. But, um, but the settings have changed on this app. So mm. normally, when people comment, I can see the comments here. Yeah. I can post the comments, but I can't see or post the comments. I could look on my phone and see if there's any questions, as long as I've got the volume turned down. Yeah, it's... Because the, because the app wants me to pay, yeah? yeah, then they've changed all of my settings that I that I set up. Oh, okay. So I need to reset them all. Okay, let's have a look. Oh, so there we are. So I'm going to turn the volume down because otherwise I'm repeating myself on my phone. <laughs> because I, I've got my volume turned off, but my phone's a bit broken, so it's still on. Yeah. Uh,
Amazing, says Palmer. Thank you, Palmer. Um, and Johnny says, this is great. Really decent fella. Monica says, really interesting. And Sandra says, hello, my loves. <laughs> hello, my loves. <laughs> That wasn't a very good impression, was it? Oh, were we? When Sandra and I were talking, we were going proper Gloucester together. We, <laughs> we, almost, we almost needed subtitles, actually. Yeah. So, um, thanks, Rob. It's really inspiring to see how you've chosen a path which has brought so much transformation into your life. Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, inspiring... I would just feel like uh, necessary and a relief. That's what it feels like to me, you know, that I'm finally after what felt like a long slog with no clarity of how it was going to end, really. Um, yes. That I'm now sitting here um, like this. So I'm excited and relieved. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Experiencing okayness yeah <laughs> yeah yeah which is what we want isn't it mm. okayness yeah brilliant right thank you very much thank you Rob. thank you so much for having me on yeah. inviting me on rather yeah. and uh i hope to speak to you again soon yeah and brilliant. uh i'll have to swing on by next time i go and visit johnny yes and sandra and yes. uh yeah yes i'll see cool. you at johnny and sandra's for dinner yeah how, yeah. I hope your online is going really well, but um, hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you get to open your beautiful shop soon too. Thanks. And um, wishing you all the very best with that. Thanks. Thanks, Rob. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. All right, Claire. Okay. Speak to you soon. Ciao. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye.